I'm Marie Ferrani, the Member of Parliament for Park Delhi Park and the Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Justice. I want to start by saying thank you to Huda Bukhari and the Canadian Centre for Victims of Torture for inviting me to deliver a message to the community on the International Day in support of victims of torture. While I came to this country as a refugee from Uganda in 1972, and while there were undoubtedly times when we struggled personally as a family, as I grew, studied, and learned more about the world, I also learned that there were immigrants and refugees who had experienced very different kinds of struggles, coping with trauma as a result of unspeakable horrors they had personally endured, like torture at the hands of authoritarian regimes. It was those stories and the writings of people who inspired me that led me to my vocation as a social justice advocate and constitutional and human rights lawyer prior to becoming a parliamentarian. During those years, I had the opportunity to prosecute war crimes with the United Nations at the International Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda. That was a formative experience because it exposed me to the horrors of torture in a way that few people are ever exposed, as we mounted evidence of the genocide that unfolded for 100 days in Rwanda in 1994. I think it's fair to say that what I was exposed to at the War Crimes Tribunal helped inform my initial decision to run for a seat in our parliament back in 2014. I personally want to do whatever I could to ensure that human rights and social justice would always be prioritized in Canada's parliament. Here in this country, we rightfully take a lot of pride in our accomplishments. A Canadian was pivotal in drafting the UN Charter. We have a Charter of Rights and Freedoms that protects against cruel and unusual punishment. We are one of the first nations in the world to ratify the UN Convention Against Torture. But we have not always matched our rhetoric with our actions. We are seeing that now in long overdue calls to address systemic discrimination and anti-black racism. Most glaringly, we see that in our centuries of mistreatment of Indigenous persons on this land. Commemorations such as today's help us think about the path we need to take going forward. Domestically, we still have tremendous work to do on our journey toward reconciliation and eradicating systemic racism. Internationally, we must continue to stand up for human rights and call out violations and injustices, whether that's the treatment of Uyghurs, other Muslim minorities, Tibetans or Hong Kong protesters in China, whether that's Russia's treatments of Ukrainian prisoners of war, or the gross human rights violations of the Muslim Rohingya minority in Myanmar. Today, on this International Day in support of victims of torture, let us commit to continuing to speak out against torture and supporting victims of torture, both at home and internationally. Thank you. Merci. Welcome. My name is Huda Bukhari and I am the Community Engagement Manager at the Canadian Centre for Victims of Torture, CCVT. Thank you for joining us today as we celebrate the International Day in support of victims of torture. This day gives us the opportunity to stand united and remind the world that torture is a cruel violation of human rights. Since 1988, the Canadian Centre for Victims of Torture has celebrated June 26th as a commemoration of the United Nations International Day in support of victims of torture. This year marks CCVT's 43rd anniversary in assisting survivors um, to overcome the lasting effects of torture, war, genocide and crimes against humanity. The CCVT and by extension Canada has been one of the earlier pioneers in the treatment and rehabilitation of survivors. According to Amnesty International, torture continues to take place in at least 90 countries around the world. This day affords us an opportunity to reflect on the life-changing effects of torture and to support those who have been subjected to such a horrible form of treatment. CCVT unites with our communities around the world in taking a stand against all forms of torture. The prohibition of torture should be absolute under all circumstances, yet torture takes place every day, in prisons, police stations and elsewhere. It happens behind closed doors. Torture is a vicious attempt at breaking a person's will. Torture is a severe violation of human rights that can never be justified, even during wartime or when national security is under threat. In all our work at CCVT, we support victims and ensure respect for their right to rehabilitation and redress. This victim-centered approach guides us to better understand and provide services to all those who come to our doors. Thank you for viewing this message. You will hear from my colleagues next, Teresa Dramatsikas, Programs Manager, who will be sharing CCVT's history, as well as CCVT's Policy Analyst and Torture Survivor, Ezzat Musal Anajad, who will share his personal story and will outline some demands we wish 
from the government. And lastly, Dr. Claire Payne, who has been treating our clients for many years and who will speak to her interaction at the CCVT and how she's been providing psychiatric services to our clients, specifically as well during this COVID period. Should you wish for further information, please look at our website, our Facebook account, and our Twitter account. Please go in and have a look, and please consider donating. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching this video, put together with effort of many people with the intention of honoring the UN Day in support of victims of torture. Since we could not hold an event this year, we did not want the day to go unacknowledged and the issue to be unnoticed. CCVT has been in existence for over 40 years and unfortunately our services are still needed. Every year we experience increased numbers. It is difficult to give an accurate number of people assisted by the several professionals, staff, supporters and volunteers affiliated with CCVT since the creation of CCVT. It is around 30,000 plus and minus. This year we are still to see the impact of closing the borders on, on people trying to escape different kinds of oppression, particularly torture. I would like to encourage you to think of the benefits that refugees bring with them when they arrive in Canada. Yes, they need support during the difficult times of early arrival. Services that are provided in our organization. Information, referrals, language instruction, assistance to find a job and others. Please feel free to see our website, ccvt.org. But it is important to remember that they also boost the economy and contribute to the development and improvement of the country. Not only they take over menial jobs at the difficult beginning of their settlement, but also share their resilience and make other people grow and become stronger like them. Supporting refugee life is supporting our own. It indeed brings our humanity up and we need to be grateful for their survival, ensure ours. I am now walking in the park, wearing with dignity a t-shirt displaying our logo to honor them, as well as all supporters of the work done in our center. I do not need to come up with new words and come up with new immortal phrases or words when I know there are many that illustrate the different facets of survival. survivors. Trauma and ensuing resilience, two words. Ubuntu, translated usually as I am because we are, in a language in South Africa, Nguni Bantu. Solidarity, another word often associated with the work for refugees and by refugees. To be called refugee is a badge of strength, courage, and victory. There's a refugee office in Tennessee. And this by a very well-known refugee, Albert Einstein. If we were to remain silent, I would be guilty of complicity. And another one, the world will not be destroyed by those who do evil, but by those who do not do anything to combat it. Hello, my name is Claire Payne. I'm a psychiatrist and I work every week at CCBT uh, and have done for the last several years. I've been asked to speak a little bit about supporting refugees who've been tortured during COVID. It's hard to generalize, of course, and our own experience of COVID has moved perhaps from high anxiety to now getting used to a new normal and to even recognizing we're bored, and this is the same for refugees. The main uh, difficulty, I think, has been for a family to be cooped up into a small apartment. That has its own challenges. For refugees who have been used to distraction, work, getting outside, meeting people, going to church, um, their memories and flashbacks of their torture can take up, as they say, too much room in their head. For some people, ref for some refugees, being uh, cooped up is, as they say, fits me too well. They're, they have an avoidance born of fear of going outside. For all these different kinds of issues, I think uh, what helps is to encourage the refugee to be distracted by courses online, by internet groups, by online church services, 
um, and by ensuring that their basic needs are met, their COVID supplements or their, they know their local feed, food bank. I'd also like to add that many refugees has, have said to me when I've inquired about their managing through COVID, they've said, I've been through so much worse. So I think we can also learn from these highly resilient people how to help them and how to help ourselves. My name is Ezzat Musallanjot. I am a survivor of torture. I have languished in Iranian political prisons for around four years. I experience all notorious techniques of torture. I have escaped three times in my life. because they were after me. There are certain dates that one never forgets. It was 12th of February 1985 that I came to Canada and applied for refugee status. Despite my background as a political economist, I chose to help survivors of torture. I joined the Canadian Centre for Victims of Torture in 1991 as a volunteer and on 6th of November 1997 as a full-time staff member. Presently I work as a settlement and trauma counsellor, simultaneously as a policy analyst and researcher. I have seen hundreds of survivors of torture and I have attended uh, government consultation meetings, the meetings of the Canadian Council for Refugees and also many international uh, meetings for, uh, uh, with regards to protection of refugees and survivors of torture. I take this opportunity, 26th of June, uh, the United Nations International Day in solidarity with victims of torture. I make certain demands from the government of Canada. First and foremost, I ask the government to work incessantly and play a leadership role in a strict prohibition of torture and rehabilitation of survivors. I request the government to consider vulnerability of torture survivors in all processes of uh, refugee and immigration protection. Please, please, Government of Canada, do not send anyone to any country back to torture. This is against uh, Article 3 of the Convention Against Torture. I request the government to address the problem of impunity. Please bring torturers, genociders, war criminals and those who have committed crimes against humanity to justice, preferably in Canada. I request the government to promote public uh, education against torture and to consider training, human rights training, for all enforcement officers from police to border security guards and to immigration detention uh, guards. This is my special request. Uh, please uh, consider using all techniques of nonviolence. So we requested the government not to use taser guns against anybody 
and address police violence. Police should be a member of the community and very much affiliated with the, with the community and there should be oversight on the work and activities of police officers. Also, I request the government, the Prime Minister, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, to ratify optional protocol to the Convention Against Torture. It is about inspection of Canadian jails and detention centers. So, by an international subcommittee of the UN Committee Against Torture. Please also accede to the third optional protocol to the Convention on the Rights of the Child. This is about uh, accepting jurisdiction of UN Committee on the Rights of the Child to receive complaints so when the rights of the child are at stake. I request you also to play leadership role towards peace, towards international justice and global disarmament. Also, I request all of my colleagues, my friends, survivors, volunteers, and people of Canada to work against torture and to ask the government to work against violence. We should all join hands. Thank you and have a good time. Bye.